Awesome. Looks like we're good. Liam, you want to zoom us in? Should I do the intro? Zoomer, yeah. <laughs> cool. Coming to you live from Numeri HQ. The founder, CEO, and chief researcher. The official sponsor of Numeri, the greatest thing since advances in financial machine learning. Street Fighter 2, Zero to One, The Library. Take it away. Amazing. All right. So that was the perfect intro for this edition of uh, Signals Roundtable, where we're going to be uh, brainstorming the specs for an open source library, Open Signals. Um, so I hope everybody brought their water because this is going to be interesting. Um, I have a <laughs> a live doc that we can all edit. JRB and I did some quick brainstorming. Um, hopefully everybody can brainstorming see that. Brainstorming before the brainstorming. What's that? I said a, uh, it was a brainstorm before a brainstorm. Yeah, a, a last minute note-taking session. So we had something to, to talk about. Hey, but, what, um, what is it? Is it a... Is it a bunch of data or is it code? Like what is open signals? It's a, it's a library. What's a library? Uh, like uh, Numer it's, API it's a, it's a or code which can download uh, things for you. Yeah, like Numer API. Yeah. Um, and right now it's nothing. It's this doc with like a few bullet points and an idea we've talked about. But I think it could be a good sort of start to the COE funding where we have this proposal, we don't have anything yet, but if, if we can build it, then we can fund it. Um, and yeah, the idea is just to enable new users to quickly download data, submit predictions to the Signals tournament as soon as possible, uh, but they should also be able to get data from all different uh, types of sources. So we'll start off with like Yahoo, Quandle, and I don't know, maybe EOD. Um, yeah, EOD. But you're still, the, the, every data set the user wanted access to, they would have to pay for themselves. But it's like somehow in a easy script. So when, when you did decide to pay, pay for Quandle, it would be very easy to import all of it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, if you write your pipeline for, for with Yahoo data and you suddenly decide uh, that uh, you want to pay for Quantal, you want better data, uh, it, it, it would be a one change with something like this. Cool. So part of the design would be having this config file where you just list out your keys. If you've paid for a service, you put your keys in your local config file, the library will read it and use like your own license and only do local caching. So, so no, licenses or, or broken or anything. And is this the, the main goal of open signals or is there other things going on as well? I think the main goal is probably this bullet point, just let people with three to four lines of code sort of download and submit predictions. Script, most of the code is in the data pipeline. Mm -hmm. And so this should just abstract that away. Then you instantiate your machine learning model, you fit it quickly on the data that you pulled in. Um, but we, there's a fine balance. UUAZ said in, in chat, we have to keep it flexible enough to allow implementing custom approaches and, and not limit the approaches too much. So I think that will be maybe part of the art to this process, figuring out how far we want to go. I think somebody uh, suggested like, why don't we just do an open numeri library instead? And I think the answer to that is just, we should focus on signals, kind of limit exactly what we're doing um, so it doesn't get too, too complex. And is there some sense of how much work, how much complexity is here? Like after this goes through Council of Elders, is it going to come out before stake management? Is it just going to be like a one month thing? Um, yeah, um, I don't know. I, hopefully it shouldn't matter. Well, 
with state management? Yeah, I, I, I think uh, uh, it should be not too much work to get started with. Uh, so uh, one of the goals that uh, it has to support at least three different data providers. Yahoo is one of them. And uh, uh, I think it's quite orthogonal to uh, things you guys are implementing, like stake management and everything else. Mm -hmm. This is a yeah. community led that's effort. Always, that's always coming soon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, what, what, what the, uh, we've been debating amongst uh, ourselves is uh, does it make sense to have some sort of feature engineering uh, built in? Uh, so Jordi has this library called Y Signals, which uh, was wrapped around uh, the Y Finance library, but I think he's removed that dependency now. Right. And uh, he has support for some uh, simple feature engineering. And uh, I, I, I personally, personally think that feature engineering should be something separate, uh, uh, but uh, I don't know. I think this is something which uh, we could have some, have some opinion on whether it makes sense to have uh, include feature engineering into it, or should it be something separate? But... That'll be one of the design decisions. I think we just have to make. Mm -hmm. And at some level, if someone makes a pull request that builds out a really cool feature generator class, it would be hard not to include it. So we'll, we'll just have to. Those are the things we're going to have to figure out. Um, in terms of timeline. I don't know. I think it should be maybe a sprint to finish the initial features, and then it should just be a, a long living repo where anyone can add to it. And that's where we're going to have to figure out the best ways to, to do funding. If it's milestone based, if it's okay, like if you implement this feature, then you get XNMR. If you, that's tough because uh, we're going to have to evaluate quality and all of that. But that's hope. That's why this call is important, just to get everyone's input and, and how best to build it. I, I tend to think there should be some feature things in there. So otherwise, it doesn't seem like it does enough for a whole package. Yeah. Uh, well, I like. You mean it would just present new raw data, and that's it? I think right, uh, like... uh, JRAI's original idea was that, was that uh, we need something like sklearn.datasets for uh, uh, numerized signals, because as, uh, I think the biggest stumbling block uh, at the moment is uh, getting data, right? And uh, uh, if you download the whole uh, Yahoo universe, I tried it after we spoke the last time, uh, you get throttled and things. So uh, you want an easy way to uh, get started. And I think this, this is the biggest uh, roadblock in, in terms of people getting started, uh, but, but in our opinion. The one thing that will be very, very, very different between this and scikit-learn data sets is you don't have to pay for those. Whereas this- you Yeah, I mean, so you always use the uh, Yahoo option, right? You, you don't really have to pay for it. And uh, uh, I think all these other data providers all, also do some limited uh, uh, free data, which you can use to experiment with. Uh, I think uh, uh, during the last uh, roundtable, Gosuto de demonstrated uh, uh, his, uh, uh, what data was he using? I believe he was using alpha vantage. Yeah, uh, and uh, he, he was using free, free data, if I'm mistaken. Yeah, but it was, I think it was like low quality and it was sort of- Yeah, yeah, data, yeah. So they added in- Yeah, so not nice uh, demo data. Yeah, although he was using dividend data, which maybe we wouldn't start with. Mm -hmm. If you just start with uh, pricing yeah. data, open, high, low, close, and volume. Uh, I, I agree, though. You probably do need some generators in here. Maybe the goal should be to redo the example script with open signals. And in order to do that, you just quickly throw in the RSI that's in the example script. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I could, uh, yeah, that could be a start. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't need to be that much. Just some things get started, like uh, like making log returns or ranking things, or just yeah, some of the basic mm -hmm. processing that people should do that a brand new person might not know that they should do. Um, so just to yeah, help people get off on the right foot, so rather than just having them get a bunch of data that will 
if they just try to start putting in SK Learn, we'll not get them very far. Yeah, I think even just, yeah, ranking the features per era is something that might not occur to you for a long time uh, if you just started with raw data. Yeah, that's fair. I, I really like the way Jordy did it in Y signals. Like, I think this should be the basis. Mm -hmm. We should just fork this. Uh, you build in new data abstraction. So in this like, or up here in like this download data function, you just have a parameter that says source equals Yahoo, source equals alpha vantage. Then you can use these same feature generators on that data because it'll somewhere in that abstraction, it's downloaded it in the exact same format. Wow. Um, that is really cool. Yeah. And including paid data, because you have some like backend config file. Um, it'll cache it. So I think this will be like huge for onboarding people into signals. That's kind of the goal. That's where we should start, in my opinion, forking Y signals. Um, maybe we can just go like bullet by bullet and see what we haven't spoken about. We, so we talk, we'll start off with open, high, low, closed volume. It'll all have to be adjusted. I think at least Yahoo enables that out of the box. Yeah. Uh, the, the config file, or maybe before we do that, on the three data providers, eventually we would want to add fundamentals, I would guess. Would we ever want to add like alternative data to this site? Like now that there are standardized Reddit scrapers on Wall Street bets and things like that, um, or should would that be out of the scope? Well, I I I I'd say it's out of scope. Uh, the initial race, uh, we could always add things later. Right? Sure. What is the best provided for like? just that like value momentum, like the kind of factor factor data. Cause I do think most models would benefit even if that gets sort of neutralized out, most models still benefit by learning about those things. Yeah, and the transformation. You said for US stocks, Fairy? Yeah, I think it's bundle for US stocks. Bundle. Your mic's pretty bad, Jeremy. Yeah, it keeps it getting oh, is it? degrading. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, okay, let me try to do something. I think that, so the transformations on those like simple factors too are important because I think that's where you won't get neutralized out as much. But I guess I agree. Quandle for the US stocks. I haven't found a good cheap data set for, for the foreign stocks that have good coverage. Is Quandle, yeah, that's still an open problem. Does Quandle, how, how much is Quandle to get the basic factor data? I think like 50 a month. I don't know. Suraj, are you in here? Suraj. <laughs> Are there any Russian hackers? Yeah, so uh, there's so many. So, so that's who gets. <laughs> What's that? Jeremy, uh, were you saying something? Um, yeah. Uh, is my mic any better now? It sounds good. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, so uh, uh, there are two data sets uh, which I used to subscribe to on Quandle, uh, uh, both from the same provider. And uh, if I arbitrage, arbitrage is better, I think he had a suggestion for a different provider for the price data. Uh, and yeah, so, so uh, I think each of them are something in the order of 40 or $50. For Quandle? You're asking about the Quandle data yeah. source I use? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, there's yeah. two. I don't use the, the wiki pricing one. Use the EOD because the EOD is split and dividend adjusted. Oh, but that is US yeah, only. I, right, right, right. 
Do you, do you remember the pricing? Not, not offhand. I, I've completely forgotten. I could mm-hmm. check my credit card statement, but I forget. It's in the combined with fundamental data. I want to say it's like 150 a month. Hmm. Yeah, something in that ballpark. Ball yeah. Okay, so what's and, the uh, next step for this? Um, are we going to, do we write a big forum post and then get the Council of Elders to I don't know, pass it through Parliament? How does this work? Yeah, exactly. I think we, we should figure out how we want to do funding on this. Do we just put like a certain bounty on, on getting all of these milestones done. And then after it's all done, the council like allocates it pro rata based on the council's like voting on uh, contribution. That's kind of where I'm leaning right now, but I don't know if, if anyone has any other ideas. That seems somewhat similar to what Gitcoin grants does. Like somebody does the thing and then the community kind of decides after the fact how valuable that was. Um, maybe yeah. some like base level reward and then from there, I don't know. Um, yeah. Do we think anyone would have problems? Like I, I imagine we have the credibility where people will put up the work up front. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I see this as the best way to do it. Cool. That sounds like yeah. We'll do that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it sounds like you're, a lot of the work has been done already by Jordy, or at least a yeah. fair bit of it. And so, yeah, if we fork that and probably give him some of the reward for that. <laughs> For sure. Agreed. I was thinking he should have some sort of like retroactive bounty for this. Can't he just do the whole thing? Yeah, theoretically. I, I like if we put all these <laughs> sort of points up and he does all of them, then yeah, he's done most of it, I think. So this would also then just incentivize other people to keep building on it and, and keep it going. Yeah. It would even incentivize him to, to keep doing it. I guess then the question is, well, should we also be funding like Numer API and Numer eval and some of those other ones? Have we funded anything to date? The council hasn't. I don't, have you guys like sent any bounties out? No, no, because um, yeah, I don't want to, necessarily do it i mean we i think we still have little like bug bounties but haven't done like a project like this with with someone but i do think it's sort of like a good thing for the council to, to do um but yeah my my sense is like if we yeah I, I think we should spend the money quickly and i also think i don't know what there's also people who um is it, it does it work like this if if there's a proposal made uh, that the community who's not on the council votes on the proposal and then the council votes among themselves and then it gets funded or is it just like the community's already elected the council the council needs to move as fast as possible because you know time is of the essence and they've delegated power to the council <laughs> and you know we've got to start spending this money well, yeah, I, mean, I, well uh, I, I think the latter is uh, probably closer to what I think should be the right thing. Uh, you, you could think of the council as a sort of a, of a player on top of the community, right? Yeah. We also should, should give uh, but, can we give grants for or 50 microphones to any, <laughs> any Zoom calls? Well, I think uh, I would take a big bounty uh, to install stalls on the computer. That is a problem. Uh, Zoom deliberately cripples people uh, using their browsers instead of instead of instead their crapware. Sorry, uh-huh. I, should, I shouldn't have said that, but yeah, I forgot that the calls recorded. But uh, uh, yeah, I refuse to install uh, this thing. So maybe I could uh, buy a throwaway laptop just for Zoom. Sounds good. <laughs> 
that's a good idea. I think um, like we should be funding things as quickly as possible. Meanwhile, we all, we also haven't really gotten a proposal from the community either. So this is like pushing that forward too. What should a proposal look like? Um, but I think we're probably beholden to the community if if there's like a poll and it's eighty percent supported, right? Like the council shouldn't have to vote again; they'll just execute it. But um, yeah, I think that's good. Um, um, I, yeah, think I think that's good. Um, <laughs> oh, Gore, you've got uh, an echo. Mike, do you want to say something? An echo. Mike, do you want to say something? This is insane. Okay, so no, but um, Mike P, who invests uh, invests uh, <laughs> in DeFi protocols uh, from time to time, um, he has like a personal rule, which is the minute the protocol is handed over to be governed by the community, that's when he sells, uh, because that's when uh, nothing happens from then on. The protocol is in like a static mode. And there's no additional changes that and no one's doing the, the right thing. So that's, again, this kind of concern I have of like, uh, we don't, the whole point of this is to make Numerite move even faster and be even more dynamic than we could possibly be internally. So I would much prefer that to be some wastage of the money than, than you know, nothing happening. Um, I wanted to also say yeah. another piece that Mike P was saying, like, so, so first of all, we've, we have this kind of system inside of Numerai, right? Like we buy a lot of data and we run it through a data pipeline and do all kinds of things to, um, to pre-process it. And the one, the, the way Mike P has built that, um, which is going to kind of power the new release of the data uh, is with all these like layers. And maybe you can speak more to it, but but basically like there's there's uh, there's level one data, which is like raw data from from the vendors, and then there's level two data, which is pre-processed to some extent, uh, and then there's like level three data, which is like ready for being trained on, um, and so looking at that Jordy's script there's a same kind of idea there like you you don't um yeah you, you there and there are certain times where you might need the raw data so for example one thing we do we never train on returns right we always train on targets which are which are super pre-processed kind of things but then when you need to do a back test you uh you might want to go back to the the level one data which is the which is the raw returns, because you need the raw returns to run a, a little back test. Um, so you're often kind of going up and down the, these levels uh, as you're building things. So I think that was a good uh, way he, he thought through it. That makes sense. Um, you guys want to open source that? We can give you like 20 NMR for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it did cross my mind um it's just it might be i'm not sure uh he's actually not here right now but i'll ask him if there are components that are worth doing um do you think it would be i think it's possible yeah one of the big issues would be like our pipeline is designed around like data where uh, have the license to like store in a database yeah. um whereas with this everybody needs their own individual license yeah, um, to, to buy stuff. Well, well, I think uh, it would benefit you guys as well because uh, you, you'll have to clean, clean it up for open source. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think he could just submit a pull request to open signals or something. It might be a good way to incorporate it. I think that's how we should be thinking about it anyway, in terms of layers like that, where so the feature engine generator is like creating that maybe layer two. Uh, yeah, it, it should be a DAG of uh, transformations like uh, this, this psychic transformers. 
What? <laughs> but I think as it stands, it's a, it's a flat list, right? As it stands, it's a what? It's a flat list of, of transformation information. Right. Cross pipeline of transformations. Okay, so then I think we have a good framework. Um, it seems like the funding situation is kind of solved. We'll come up with a number and then it'll just be like pro rata distributed. I think we should retroactively um, fund Jordy as well. And we'll just kind of see what happens. I'd ideally like this to happen as soon as possible and for like other proposals to happen as soon as possible too. So. You know, maybe this is a good kickstart. I would, I would say maybe you should make like a sign up thing for it to have like put the bullet points up and have people sign up to do different parts of it. Just to, mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, just so someone is saying, I'm going to do this rather than just kind of be like, hey, someone do this. And then it's just good to kind of diffusion responsibility issues. Right. This will become a forum post. And then I think we'll, we'll have to do that. And then once it's like a real repo, we can have the correct like Git workflow, so people do know who's made a branch to work on something else and and all that. But yeah, agreed. And would we update all of our example scripts to to basically all use this system like somehow? Is that is that the idea? I think that would be cool if this does become like bare bones enough and it really is just four or five lines of code to to swap in and we'll get rid of 50 lines of code that seems like an improvement to me um especially i i think the biggest hurdle on signals is the data i think everybody kind of agrees with that and and this would go the longest way to fix that yeah um and then you can even have like three different example scripts. They're all the exact same, except for one parameter. And you can see the differences between only changing the data source. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I'm happy with what we've covered. I was a little like unsure of, of the path this would take. It seems easy enough now. Um, I don't know. Anybody have any thing to add on the open signals? I don't think there are any questions on Slido. So, oh, Slido, <laughs> I'm seeing yet. What's that? Was it? Was there a Slido? Slido? There was a Slido. Apparently, nobody saw oh, it. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Has anyone? Uh, tried any new data lately? Are there any new example scripts that have come out lately? Not that I'm aware of. I haven't seen anything. Look who it is. There's, there's some, uh, there's some data sets that I think that are like, <laughs> 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 There's some data sets that Numerai, uh, that I think are, are good data sets for Numerai to add, but we haven't added yet. So maybe this is like some potential alpha for someone who, who has access to this kind of data to do it before Numerai ever gets its hands on it. And the, 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 two, the two that I uh, am quite interested in is data from options and data from corporate debt. So there are options markets uh, where that are pretty well traded that are to do with single stocks. Uh, so uh, Tesla will have call options and put options and you can compute lots of different variables from the options uh, like the, you know, the Greeks of the options or, or, or all kinds of things. And, what the options implied risk for the stock is, things like that. Um, so that data is uh, for the US, I think quite available, but it's not data we've, uh, we've used, implied volatility, exactly. Uh, so options have this. So I think someone who built a signal that used options data, uh, that would be really interesting. 
and very likely to have some additional alpha because I'm telling you now we don't we don't neutralize by that data because we don't have it. Um, the other one for the same reason is corporate debt. So you can think of options as a derivative on the stock. Corporate debt is also like a uh, can, you know an asset related to the stock. So if a company has six percent, uh, they have to pay six percent interest on on their debt. Another company only has to pay 1% interest on their debt. Uh, isn't that interest rate that they have to pay on their debt indicative of the risk or return profile of that stock? Um, and so a model that trained on options and corporate debt data could be very, very good. And finally, uh, longer term data. So in the, as many of you know, on Numeri, the data is about 20 years worth of data, um, maybe a bit less. And so if someone had data, so I know the US, there's very good data, even from like the 60s, 70s or so. Um, uh, and I think arbitrage has talked about this data, like the CRISP, I think it's called the CRISP data set. Yep, um, CRISP, Center for Research and Security Prices. Right, so the reason Numeri doesn't go far, that far back is because there's not much global stock data available that far back. But if you wanted to make a really good US-based signal and then 3x your MMC on it, <laughs> um, you, could, you could maybe benefit by, by making it go back really far. Um, so anyone who could, who could build a, a model that used really old data and up to the present might be, might be good even if it's just US only. So those are my three tips of possible data sets to look at. Nice, I like the, the options idea. Arbitrage mentioned implied vol is very powerful, I agree. And that's like an easy one to calculate if you have the options uh, data but lots of transformations. I haven't really thought about using corporate debt. That's probably just a good factor in its own right. Yeah, I've heard it is. And some data vendors have been actually trying to sell it to us and we might buy it soon, but um, the, they do say it's, it's, it's quite a big, big deal. And, and the other quants are really liking that data and integrating it lately. That stuff might be like a little more expensive and harder to find, but probably worth it. Yeah. I think the corporate data is harder than the options data to find. Mm -hmm. I've also missed quite a lot of those signals like clubhouses and things lately. Uh, are there other things that are being that are issues and things we can work on or? Yeah, I was gonna say, um, that since we have you guys on, we may as well ask you the questions that have been coming up and that we kind of recycled through on those clubhouses. Um, the, fur, the biggest is probably the, the core 20 and just like updates on that and what, if there's a new plan. Yeah, well, do people really like it? Because the, the, research we have on it, it's like, it'll hurt 30% of the people to switch to it and help the rest. Um, so it's not like a guarantee that, you know, we're gonna have everyone be really happy if we switch to it. And we don't really like the idea of having two because then you have like two different MMCs. And so um, we, we sort of put it on pause and sort of instead did three times MMC as a way to juice payouts, um, but uh, I still like Core 20. Um, but yeah, is there a feeling in this group at least that you guys would all prefer it pretty much? Yeah, this is something we, I guess we talk a lot about then. Um, well, first, I think, so the analysis on like converting our six days to 22 days is a little tough because it assumes nothing changes. Whereas if we had 20 day targets, everything would change. We'd retrain models and it would be cool to see like the full change. Um, 
from a user perspective, I would like to have two tournaments. Uh, I guess from a fun perspective, that may just be harder for you. Uh, I was thinking it could be cool because now you just have new tournaments to blend together for a better meta model, but it, it's probably a lot more complicated. But that that's how I would like to do it, is just totally segment them away from each other. Yeah, JRB, I don't know if you have anything to add. Yeah, uh, so uh, one thing I was thinking was, was uh, for core 20, uh, could we have something in the UI uh, where it can show us which rounds are resolved? Because uh, it's it's a bit of work to do it uh, manually. Uh, okay. Um, I'll get back to you on that, maybe. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe you could bold out uh, uh, the rounds which are actually resolved, as opposed yeah. to the ones which are still in progress. Yeah. In the uh, and, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. As far as payouts are concerned, could we perhaps have a slider for uh, core payout so you can have the same thing? Uh, but you can make it opt in with uh, you could you default to zero uh, percent, uh, but but you can you can always opt into half car twenty or one x car twenty or something thereabouts. About have you guys thought about that? I'm sure you have. You mean? Sorry, it's very hard to hear you. Slider. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, what I mean to say is, uh, we already have two sliders, right? Uh, I think the correlation slider is active on signals. But it is on classic. So could we have a third slider for car twenty? So does that could mean still make it opt in? Does that mean you would be staking core, normal core, core four, the six day core, and then you get a slider on how much core twenty you want on top of that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, but it, it would also imply that uh, there might be people uh, who who want to stake on core twenty, so you should be able to zero out. Uh, the four-day core, as well as well, or is that complicating things too much? I don't know. It is for sure complicating because yeah, the it's it's not like yeah, uh, yeah. Ultimately, but, uh, things uh, like MMC and things like that that you have to worry about, where it's like, what target is that using? Um, and it's, it's hard to, to have multiple targets. Yeah, then you may as well have two tournaments and then just not stake on yeah. the six day and only stake on the, the 20 day. And then you do clearly have two different meta models to like compute MMC to. Although then if you're spreading it out, it might be too sparse. Like we're already seeing there are only a few models that kind of are the meta model because there, there are only a few like very high staked accounts. So if you're a high staked account, your MMC sort of collapses to zero because you are the meta model. And for everybody else, your correlation is also your MMC. Um, I guess that's, that's my meandering thought on like 3x MMC. It seems maybe just like a bridge until the stakes are, are spread out more. Otherwise, it's kind of a dangerous game if you have a couple bad weeks in a row. Do you think uh, it won't be bad or like we won't have a, a revolt if we just deleted uh, the, the six day correlation and, and switched completely to the 20 day? Do you think most people, as long as we gave out those new targets, most people would be fine with that? Hard to speak for everybody else. I always, I can never anticipate how the community responds to things. It's always fun to watch. I, I guess I'd be okay with it. I, it's, I, 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 I think I'll sympathize with the revolters. What's that? <laughs> I, I'll sympathize with the revolters. On, I'm on the side of the revolters as well. Okay. I revolt. There, there you go. It's harder to remove something than, than to add something, obviously. Um, uh, that's where I would leave it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess the few points there, arbitrage put in chat, slower compounding isn't as nice. The weekly compounding is like a pretty good feature. Um, 
Honeycomb asked if the team investigated whether the core 20 appears to help because people were not training towards it. So if people deliberately trained, would the results be worse or would they actually be better? I think that's pretty important. Yeah, like I said, I think it helps 70% of users now. And so it seems reasonable that it might be something like help 85% or 90% of users if they were all trying to do well on that target. I mean, ultimately, I'm for a switch to Core 20 because that is a far less noisy time frame than weekly, which is far less noisy than daily, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, yeah, somehow addressing the slower pace of compounding would be super clutch. How's your PhD going? You really look like a PhD student these days. I can't hear you. What dissertation? What? <laughs> what? <clears throat> so it's gone well. All right. Um, I don't know if anyone has any other questions. Jeremy, what else do we talk about on the clubhouse? Well, I think car twenty is always the elephant in the room, and yeah. uh, we've spoken about that. Yeah, uh, Core 20, uh, MMC, the collapse of MMC if you're a big staker that came up. And then fundamental data for international markets. It's, to me, that's the biggest mm -hmm. treasure trove to find. Somebody who gets a good source for international fundamental data. I'll share their referral code on every social media platform I have so that they can potentially get paid just to find this data source because of other people signing up on the referral code. I do think clarity on the core 20, like sooner rather than later would be better, obviously, uh, just in terms of retraining models. And like, I'm, I, I haven't been investing as much time in improving the existing models if there's going to be a change. So clarity there would be cool. What's the main yeah, thing to having two tournaments? What? What's the main, what's the main issue for having two tournaments on our side? Yeah. MMC and one of them is better for us than the other. So we, we always, yeah, we do want to make sure we're paying people for, you know, when they're helping the fund. Um, some of these really short term signals might be too short for us to benefit from, but we don't really know. It's quite hard to do research on that. Um, wouldn't both be better than just one? Both be better than just one. <clears throat> Depends. Depends. Uh, maybe no one, no one works on this. The the one that's valuable to us, because hmm. the other one's paying out so much or whatever. <clears throat> yeah, I guess uh, ultimately, if you, if you decide R twenty is much more valuable to you than uh, the four day return. I, I think you should change, uh, but uh, like a like, uh, first chat, uh, giving enough of a notice is probably a good idea for us to you know, rebuild our models. Yeah. Suraj also said in the chat, auto regressive targets, which is something we talk a lot about in uh, Clubhouse. Mm -hmm. So to whatever extent there is a 20 or a six, it would be cool to keep the six around as optional targets. I know we've mentioned that a bunch, but mentioning it again, I guess can hurt. Optional to stake on or just to see? Just to see and to train on. So we, oh, yeah. right. We'll train on six day, 14 day and 22 day, but we're only scored on the 22 day, for example. Yeah, is that the path dependency discussion we have every now and then? Right. Where you want to figure out how it evolves over time, not necessarily only predict the end target. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we have been thinking quite a bit about new targets for Numeri as well. Maybe 10xing the targets on Numeri. 
uh, because, because of these kinds of ideas, like you just said, if, yeah, if, if, if you were training a model on 20D, on a 20D target, uh, you would, why, why wouldn't you want it to also be good at 6D? And wouldn't it be a great, a great new cost function to throw at your model to make it good at both of them at the same time? Um, and so that idea is still, so even though we ultimately will score on the one target, it does seem to be a benefit to throwing out some other targets. Um, and we have shown that there are some, some targets which when you train on them tend to, tend to help even when scored on the other target. Yeah, I imagine it would, in, it would reduce your intra round volatility too. So the fun sharp would theoretically go up from that. Um, yeah. Let's just say that uh, it costs $25,000 a year to buy, um, to buy fundamental global equity data. Okay. Um, should we just, is that something the council should just buy for a good user? So uh, say Siraj says he wants to make a model on fundamental data. He doesn't have $25,000 a year. Um, can the council just pay for, pay for it uh, for him? And maybe he can even pay the council back based on his earnings. Because I worry that I don't want signals to just be about you know, how, how good you could possibly do on $50 a month data. Um, I do want it to somehow to have you know, some of you as users spending half a million dollars a year eventually on data. And obviously, again, not breaking any of the data licensing agreements. So we'd sort of have to be, we'd have to be kind of giving, giving this one to Siraj, giving this one to someone else, giving, and, but I do think in the region of, of yeah, tens of thousands of dollars is where this data gets quite good. Yep. Data loans. Yeah. Data there loans. might be some. Data loans. <laughs> Well, uh, I, I've got a related question, which is, which is uh, what's, what's preventing you guys from giving us some black box data for signals? You mean like obfuscated? We could or could not use. Yeah. Well, we'd, give you, we'd be giving you the, the stock IDs. Uh, right. The yeah, that's, that's the only uh, problem there, right? Yeah. The, the data vendors wouldn't let us do that. Yeah. Oh. Because okay. that's not obfuscated enough that makes sense hmm. i think the problem with getting any one user some quality data is a lot of people will say well, what about me and <laughs> but, then apply to apply to yeah. for as well make on, on that note richard if you want to send me a bloomberg terminal i'll happily accept and i can write all kinds of stuff on it kind of do if you drop out of your phd <laughs> oh, you're bad. Oh. You're bad, Richard. You're really bad. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell my advisor what you just said. I'm not gonna be happy. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, again, the council is like, we, we wanted to give a hundred thousand dollars. We could give a million dollars uh, if there was a reason for the money, and if there was a plan uh, that you know, let's make. Siraj, the wealthiest data owner in all of India, <laughs> uh, we could like that could be a good proposal, and he could just like make a whole company out of it and even pay back the loan. Would be great. <laughs> <laughs> Siraj. I, I mean, I think that would be cool. Obviously, there are some some limitations. Like, how do we decide who gets it? And I think, like Arbitrage said, yeah, and and also, do the crypt, uh, the data providers take uh, crypto payments? Where there's a will, uh, there's a way. Sadly, 
I haven't got anyone to do it yet. I've tried many times. <laughs> You keep, you keep, you keep yeah, I wish there were a way for the council to buy a data set and obfuscate it in some way, but still keep the stock IDs. But if you're running into that problem, we would too. Well, I think it's possible that some data vendors aren't so bad. Like, I don't think Quandle, like, I mean, I don't want to speak for Quandle, but I don't think they would mind, like, if it was the most basic data. Because in their, in their terms, they often say, if you derive this data and turn it into a report or something, that report is your IP. Um, right. so, you, so you could say, well, we've really obfuscated it. But I think if you have the stock ID names, it's, it does, it's pretty de-obfuscated in a lot of ways. So I'm not sure. Well, if you put things yeah, into decile ranks. Uh, due diligence. Yeah, if you, mm -hmm. if you did decile rankings, that kind of does obfuscate it a bit because you're getting 10 bins of some some feature not the precise measure so i don't know I, I haven't seen the terms i'm not too familiar with it but that would seem like it was enough i know for my purposes i can share any data i want in the classroom as long as it's four or great so you know i can i can try things out to make sure that it will work in the classroom such as the bond corporate bond data Right, so I can test that out and see if it works, but then I can't use it commercially. So, you know, there's lots of these like edge cases. So, like if I held a class and you got a grade, you can use the data. All I'm saying, but I'm not accredited, right? And since you want me to quit my PhD, this sounds like a pretty good idea, but now I can't do it because then I won't have the credential. So, you already do a daily Twitch stream. Can you just grade all of the signals? Yeah, in? yeah, like, absolutely. Right, Give them a rank. Yeah. ranked performance on it and then they get access to, to the, <laughs> the classroom data set yeah lots of creative ways that we can think about it too i think one of the problems of, of the obfuscated data set in signals is that you basically just created the main tournament again you, you've converged right. on this like one solution space that people can work within but you're still going to have clear like earn or burn rounds and what's cool about signals? Well, I think it's going to be more than the, the main tunnel, right? Because uh, you have this obfuscated data set, but you're also free to use anything else that you want. Yeah, fair. But but imagining people won't, as we've seen, if you look at the histogram, it's like mostly people doing the example model or like a linear model on that. Um, so people just kind of take what's given to them initially. Yeah. And we don't want to fall into that. The gleaning will continue until morale improves. Yeah, maybe if you if you have like three obfuscated data sources and or data sets, and you give those out, but it becomes a little bit of a a hassle at some point. Mm -hmm. I'd be remiss if I didn't do this. One scores. They slow today. It's not even 10 a.m. PST. And <laughs> soon. Soon, yes, yes. Soon. The API was on time. Yep. I'm going to refresh the Slido one more time. We're almost at the top of the hour. No questions in the Slido at all. Okay, well, I do really like the, the open signals idea. Um, one thing it makes me think of, though, is that it's going to be an open free data set of signals, like the, by the name of it. Um, so I don't know, maybe we can think of the maybe the name can be more like descriptive. But I, I really like the idea of like, yeah, uh, I, all the example scripts right now, it's like 90% of the script is, is data loading and data pre-processing. That's identical to some other scripts, data loading and pre-processing. And we could have a very flexible, uh, interesting kind of parameterized, abstracted version of all that that uh, would benefit everybody. So I like, I like the idea a lot. And I do think we should think on this question of so that I think that whole that whole solution will be great for like, you know, the 10 data sources out there that are all like $50 a month or whatever. 
but we should have something about, you know, can we get some community members very expensive data um, under some terms that uh, work? Uh, and, and maybe that's a grant proposal, data loan proposal, people could just submit. Like I found this incredible data set, it's this expensive and it's been used in these great papers and I'm, I'm on the top of the signals leaderboard so I'm the best person to, 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 to be the one to buy this data set if you, if you help me. Uh, and that, and, I, and you know, I, I think that's like not that, like a really good start to kind of seed, seed uh, the high quality data. Yeah, agreed. Um, so I, I'll put some of this like open signals bullets into a forum post, like a proposal, and, and we'll all run from there. If you have another name suggestion, I'm all ears. <laughs> and other than that, still no Slido questions. So I, I think we can wrap it up and talk to everybody on Rocket Chat. Hey, everybody, may the burn be in your favor. Bye, everybody.